Ministry of Sex. You heard that right. Russia wants such a ministry to fix its falling birth rate. It has an aging population, low birth rates and rising mortality. So the Kremlin wants people to have more babies and have them fast. And they floated some brilliant ideas to make it happen. A new ministry is only the beginning. They want couples to turn off the internet and lights by 10 p.m. and get to work. They want to pay a pension to mothers who stay at home and not go to office. They want to cover hotel expenses for your wedding night and pay bills for your first date. Now, first dates are scary enough without the government involved, but Russia wants to do all of this and more because President Vladimir Putin has high expectations. He wants women to have eight children or more. That's going to take some work from couples and apparently the Kremlin, which has passed a new bill this week banning child-free lifestyles. It outlaws any form of so-called propaganda which promotes the refusal to have children. This includes material on the internet, in media outlets, in movies, in advertisements. Basically anything that promotes a lifestyle without children is banned. Violators will be subjected to fines, about $4,000 for individuals and $50,000 for legal entities. Now if you know Russia even a little bit, you know that they're acting out. Much like with human beings, when countries act out, it is usually out of fear. And Russia is very scared. Over the past decade, they have seen a continuous demographic decline. Russia is home to some 145 million people. That's smaller than their population in 1991, when the USSR broke up, when the Soviet Union collapsed. And this year, it, has, it is expected to shrink further by 500,000. This poses a threat to the country's economy and social fabric, so the Kremlin is throwing money and bizarre sexual ideas at the problem. It also reflects broader demographic trends the world over. Our planet is slowly but surely walking towards a baby bust, a global population crash. Fertility rate or the number of births per woman is falling across most countries. In 2017, the global fertility rate stood at 2.5, by 2021, it was down to 2.3, and now it is 2.1. What is the ideal rate? 2.2. So we are below the ideal rate. 2.2 is also called the replacement rate, the rate of births per woman, which keeps the population stable. The world average is lower than that. So the number of births is falling. What are countries doing about it? They've already curbed women's rights in more ways than one. They have failed to ensure the safety of women. They have judged and controlled women's bodies. They have certainly not made it easy to have or raise children. And now they're cajoling women like they are children so that they can have more children. This is what most countries do. They first try to bribe women, like South Korea did. It has the lowest fertility rate in the world at 0.72. Since the year 2006, South Korea has spent more than $270 billion. Last year, Japan pledged $74 billion and Taiwan has spent more than $3 billion. Most of this money is for payments or tax benefits to new mothers. But the cold hard cash has not delivered. So governments try step two, sweet talk. Singapore, for instance, has among the, the lowest fertility rates in the world. This is the year of the dragon. So during the Lunar New Year, they urge people to add, and I'm quoting, little dragons to their family. In other words, have children and have them this year. That was a message. It is a crass message quoted in honey. But often even that doesn't work. Then leaders resort to what they do best. They call women names, like villainizing what they call childless cat ladies in the US or making strange demands, like in Japan, where they want women who don't have children to remove their uterus at 30. Meanwhile, France wants compulsory fertility testing for women aged 25. Bizarre is a small word to describe what is happening here. This borders on dystopian. Governments are so used to having a say over women's bodies, they don't want to accept that in certain things, nature plays a role. And do you know the worst part? None of these tactics work. Decades of research proves this. People will not have children because you push them to. They will not have more children if you entice them with payment or fertility tests or bans on so-called child-free propaganda and certainly not with public shaming. So what should governments do?
will create conducive environments, implement policies that help mothers, provide better housing, generous maternity leave, cheaper childcare and more jobs so people can build the lives they want while also having children. About time, governments get their act together, do their research and stop acting like nosy neighbors pushing women to have children.